unicorn today. I watch the fireflies light up the Milky Way, and all the prayers that go unanswered seem to find a place to stay. And still we pray. And as the hands of time reach out. Sorry, I didn't hear you come in. I'm uh, Mort, uh, the innkeeper. Um, hold it. Yes, yes, right on time. Um, come, make yourselves comfortable, please. This uh, motley crew over here is our house band. Now that. Yes, Chris, Chris, okay. My apologies from them. They're usually very well behaved and appropriate, but, uh, oh, please, let me get my wife. ST! ST! What? Wait a second, I'm upstairs. Oh. Uh, oh, uh, let me put up some tea and coffee for you. Ah, the beautiful ST. Mort, you didn't tell me we were going to be blessed with so many wonderful guests. Well, I'm sorry, my dear. Well, welcome everyone to our Inn of Small Miracles. Oh, put your GPS away, because you won't find us. There's no signpost up ahead. In fact, um, since you're here, this means that you are ready to experience the miracles in your own life. And well, that's the only requirement to find this humble establishment of ours. Can you get this off? You take this off after the water boils. No, I take it off to pour the water in. Yes, you take the top off, and then you fill the water in there. <laughs> Amazing. That's much smarter. Yes, it's a wonder, Morton. Yes, like a miracle, yes. right? <laughs> ah, miracles. So, you're here for a miracle? Does anyone know what a miracle is? Yes. Anybody else? Uh-uh. All right, Esty, if you could. Okay. Now, according to some man named Webster, a miracle is essentially defined as an extraordinary event manifesting divine intervention in human affairs. Now, that can mean many events, from the parting of the Red Sea to the birth of a child, to my taking a next breath, an autumn leaf floating on the wind. Ah. Mort learning how to make tea. <laughs> We're constantly surrounded by supernatural events. And in the next half hour, we are going to experience true events, miracles that exist in each and every moment. Are they small miracles? Who can differentiate between a big miracle and a small miracle? Beautiful. We're just calling these stories small miracles to help us all remember that uh, help is available to us all 24-7. And we hope these stories open us to the help that we all need sometimes in our lives. Ken and Rhonda Gill got married when they were quite young. Ken was a six foot three gentleman. A couple of years into their marriage, Rhonda and Ken were blessed with a baby girl, Desiree. From the beginning, Desiree was the apple of Ken. Desiree grew, Ken would take his daughter everywhere. Hiking, dune buggy riding, fishing for bass and salmon on the Feather River. As 
Rhonda would lovingly say, she is definitely Daddy's little girl. Nobody expected it when Ken got very ill and was suddenly taken from this life. Especially Desiree. I mean, how could she possibly have fathomed such a thing? Her superhero, her beloved Daddy, gone. And now, seven weeks after the funeral, Rhonda and her inconsolable daughter have moved into Rhonda's mother's house. Rhonda desperately hoping that she and Grandma Trish can help fill the enormous void in her life. Desiree, sweetheart, it's okay, honey. Come talk to Grandma. I want to show you something from Daddy. Come on. From Daddy? Come on. All right, let's go. See the Big Dipper right there? Uh-huh. I see it right there. Yeah. Now, look at the first star on the handle. See where it starts? Mm-hmm. Now, count three stars over to the left. One, two, three. And you'll see a star that keeps changing colors right when you look at it. I see it. Like it's blue, then red. That's the one. That's your daddy shining down from heaven. Daddy? Desiree, honey, it's time for bed. I want to stay out here with daddy. But sweetheart, it's late. No! I want to stay out here with daddy! Maybe mommy and I can and tuck you in on the swing here, and you can cuddle up right out here. I want to! I want to! It's mild enough. I know. And I got so scared when I did catch that fish. It wasn't little, it was huge. <laughs>
There seemed to be nothing that could bring Desiree back. Rhonda prayed for her daughter every night. They took her to see some child psychologists, but nothing was working. Not only had Rhonda lost her beloved husband, but the torture of seeing her child's pain was almost too much to bear. Weeks went by in agony. Finally, it was November 8th, what would have been Ken's birthday. Rhonda got the idea to visit Ken's gravesite. Desiree took to the idea immediately. So let's go. A card. I want to bring a card. There's a nice little shop along the way. We'll stop there, yeah. OK? I was telling you about. Let's see what we can find, all right? Hello, how are you? Hello. Oh, look, sweetie, here. Let's see if we can't find a nice card for Daddy. Oh, these are good. That one's pretty. Yeah? You like that one? Ah, oh, that's a good one. What is it, sweetheart? I have, I have no way to send anything to him. Sure you do. You can tie this little card to one of these balloons and send it straight up to heaven. Yes. 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 All right, now, which one do you want? That one. The mermaid? All right. That's a great choice. It's a wonderful choice. Here's your mermaid balloon. So, sweetie, what do you want to say? OK. So please tell him happy birthday. I love you and miss you. Um, I hope you get this and can write me on my birthday in January. You ready to send Daddy his surprise? Let's go over here in the clearing. We have a surprise for you. Shall we send it off? Time to go home. Did you see that? I saw Daddy reach down and take it. Now I know he's going to write me back. Prince Edward Island, off the coast of eastern Canada. Forest Ranger Wade McKinnon, from the small town of Mermaid, instead of its usual spot in the estuary, decides to go duck hunting on Mermaid Lake. 
garbage. People just don't care. Back early. <laughs> that is the strangest duck I've ever seen. Well, look at this. To Daddy in Heaven. Yeah. November 8th. Happy birthday, Daddy. Look at the mailing address. Live Oak, California. It's only November 12th. This balloon traveled 3,000 miles in four days. You found a, a mermaid balloon in Mermaid Lake. <laughs> We've got a right to this Desiree. And maybe we were chosen to help this little girl. I, I wouldn't know what to say. It's just so awful. A little girl dealing with death. Yeah. Well, why don't I tie this up right over here? And maybe we can uh, think of something to do for this young girl. Wade let the matter rest, but Donna couldn't stop thinking about it. <laughs> she even tried stuffing the balloon in a closet so it wouldn't remind her, but... Yet, as the weeks went by, Donna found herself thinking more and more about the balloon, how it had flown over the Rocky Mountains and the Great Lakes. A few more miles, it would have landed in the ocean. Instead, it had stopped right there, in Mermaid, on Prince Edward Island, all the way in Canada. Wade. No matter what I do, I just keep thinking more and more about little Desiree's balloon. And it just makes me feel that we are so blessed to be healthy, to have each other. And I think that balloon came to us for a reason. I think we need to try to help Desiree. And you know tomorrow's my birthday, Daddy. I can't wait to see what you got me. I love you so much. And who is this gorgeous young lady? Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. <laughs> Which one of these is from Daddy? Oh, we're not opening presents yet. Come look at your cake. It's a mermaid cake. Yes! yes. Who could that be? It's from Daddy. Let me see that. Go ahead, open it. Happy birthday to a very special girl. Happy birthday from your Daddy. I guess you must be wondering who we are. Well, it all started in November when my husband, Wade, went duck hunting. 
guess what he found? A mermaid balloon that you sent to your daddy. There are no stores in heaven, so your daddy wanted someone to do his shopping for him. I think he picked us because we live in a town called Mermaid. Oh, no. I know your daddy wants you to be happy and not sad. I know he loves you very much and will always be watching over you. Lots of love, the McKinnon. I knew daddy would find a way to remember my birthday. Of course he did. <laughs> The Little Mermaid. This is a different version than the one your daddy used to read to you. Yeah, sweetie, this is, this is the original version where the Little Mermaid dies because a wicked witch takes her tail, but then three angels bring her up to heaven. Of course she goes to heaven. That's why daddy sent me this book, because the mermaid goes to heaven just like him. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. <laughs> the Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. Once upon a time. <laughs> Desiree's mom got in touch with the McKinnons to thank them. The two families headed off. They spoke frequently on the phone. Desiree, Rhonda, and Grandma Trish in order to visit the McKinnons on Prince Edward Island actually flew all the way across the continent just like that balloon did. Wade took them all to see the spots beside the lake where he found the balloon. People told Rhonda what an amazing coincidence it was that that mermaid balloon landed so far away in a place called Mermaid Lake. But Rhonda knows Ken picked the McKinnons as a way to send his love to Desiree. And Desiree understands now that her father will be with her always. <laughs>